And the impact of COVID-19 on tourism isn't just limited to Spain. A new report from the World Tourism Organization has revealed the enormous global cost of the virus. It says that tourist numbers around the world dropped 98% in May compared to the same month in 2019. There was a 56-year-on-year drop in tourist arrivals between January and May. That amounts to nearly 275 billion euros in lost tourism receipts. Well, for more on this report, I'm joined by World Tourism spokesman Marcello Risi. Hello there. Thank you very much for joining us on the programme. Now, if we focus on Europe, Marcello, um, several European countries are amongst the most visited in the world. So if we look at the continent, just how bad is this slump in tourism? Well, you just summed up our latest figures, which uh, we issued uh, today. And thank you again for uh, having the World Tourism Organization uh, speaking on, on Euronews. In fact, Europe as a region is uh, the tourism powerhouse um, of the world. And if only until May, um, it's triple the amount of losses um, that we suffered about a decade ago with the last really economic and financial crisis. And this was even before having the numbers for the high season in the Northern Hemisphere. So now Europe, we we're really in the midst of. Um, we can only guess uh, what numbers we will come up with in September when we'll be uh, speaking again to, to Euronews uh, on this. Um, it is, um, it is uh, tourism. Uh, it's, it has been in the uh, front page cover news um, for the wrong reasons. But again, reflecting um, the relevance um, uh, of the sector. Um, so we have to take these things uh, with extreme caution. Um, the environment is really uncertain. The virus is not really deciphered. We don't have a vaccine. We don't have a treatment. Uh, we certainly do not have final numbers. Uh, we're having scenarios on how deep the slump might be. And uh, from the World Trust Organization, we've estimated that depending on how borders open, how the market reacts, and of course, how the COVID-19 um, plays out and uh, social behavior really um, interacts with all of this, uh, we're looking at minus 60 up to minus 80% um, of uh, a reduction in international tourism for 2020. Tourism is the hardest set sector um, across the world. Um, also, if you look at uh, figures like that, which are just massive, difficult almost to grapple with, uh, how long would you evaluate that it will take for the tourism sector to be able to recover? Well, Isabel, that's the, the crystal ball we're all craving, right? Um, but consulting our experts and looking at and really never forgetting, this is, everybody talks about uncharted territory, but this is really uncharted territory. We're guessing, and our experts that we're consulting um, at least up to two years uh, for things to come back to um, a new reality. We don't like to speak about the new normal. It's not a new normal. It's a new reality. We will have to just deal with uh, really factoring COVID-19 as, as yet another reality um, of, of our lives. It's another important really um, factor uh, to consider in, in our daily lives, in tourism and really way beyond tourism. And now, the importance of tourism is because it, it really goes beyond just the sector itself. It's a huge economic value chain. It's really deep social footprint. You see the tip of the iceberg, but what tourism entails is so much more that is so relevant for our society. So it's a, it's a good indicator to see where things um, are going. But really now talking business, if we're looking about really arrivals, air traffic, transportation, accommodation, and so on, uh, we will have to see um, really two or three years at least um, to see uh, where we're going um, to be and, and what the real Ma life is going to be also. So Marcelo, when we look at the gravity obviously of this virus, but also the impact that it's had to this sector, and we see what's happened now, we've seen quarantines being imposed by the UK to Spain, um, Norway yeah. as well. Uh, do you think things could be done differently? Do you think things can be done differently so this tourism sector, that people's livelihoods aren't put at such, exposed to such risk? Well, it's of course, I mean, it's a prerogative of any country and we recognize the really the governments have the duty uh, to put health um, of the citizens uh, first. Um, uh, and again, it's unprecedented what we're experiencing. Now, the challenge is, of course, finding um, the right balance between really safeguarding public health 
protecting livelihoods and businesses. That's not easy. In Europe alone, um, tourism accounts for at least 27 million jobs. Um, that is huge. Um, what I think and what the World Tourism Organization, of course, uh, really believes is that the pandemic has proven that going it alone, flying solo is not the solution. Um, if anything, uh, we are really stronger together and we need to act uh, in a coordinated manner uh, because uh, the, the, really the virus doesn't really care about uh, borders, uh, nor any type of borders for that matter. And we need to cooperate and, and really believe that we will only emerge out of this uh, stronger if we uh, cooperate, coordinate and uh, don't think that isolation is the solution. Okay, well, flying solo, not the answer. Thanks so much, uh, Marcelo Risi, for joining us. No.